right, we're going to bring in Tim Stewart, president of the U.S. Oil and Gas Association. And I've got to read you his tweet. We get it up on the full screen. OPEC says no. SPRO options all but gone. The White House has one option left, and it is the one option they should never have turned away from in the first place. That is the U.S.-based oil and gas industry. Life comes at you pretty fast. That from uh, Mr. Tim Stewart. Tim Stewart, welcome to the show. We appreciate it very much. It's one heck of a brilliant tweet. Uh, you're my kind of guy, truth to power. But, you know, um, with this whole calamity now that we've given our, you know, we've gone from independence to dependence, we're giving the power back to the Saudis, back to OPEC, even to Russia now. I'm reading in the paper today, in the Wall Street Journal news report, not editorial, that Biden is uh, contemplating blocking all offshore federal leases and drilling, which is exactly the reverse of the lesson they should have learned from this catastrophe. So I want to get you, you know, pick your brain on this. Well, sure. You know, Larry, the first question we all have to ask ourselves is what is wrong with using American workers and American companies? The administration always trumpets every time a chip manufacturer says we're going to build a plant in New York or somewhere. Why do we feel like we have to offshore the oil and gas uh, operations in the United States to some other country? It doesn't make any sense. You know, it, it, it's really, it's tough because, you know, the prior administration, thanks to you and all the, the folks you worked with, had the industry in such a great position to be a global leader for so long. And we don't have to be in this situation. We, didn't, we don't need this OPEC plus confrontation. If President Biden 18 months ago would have gone to the Gulf Coast and said, let's keep this up, domestic production, let's do this. And now we find ourselves begging for oil from the Persian Gulf. It's, it, it's a horrible situation to be in for two things. One, Larry, we have, the result is we have lost control of two things. We've lost control of the pricing power in the global markets, mm -hmm. and we lost control of the policy narratives. And that is why we, we find ourselves negotiating from a position of weakness, and OPEC Plus certainly isn't impressed by that. You know, it's, um, we said this at the top of the show with Senator Barrasso, but I want to repeat it here. Um, it is unimaginable that this country would turn to places like Venezuela and Iran for help on oil when we have such vast resources here, the most efficient oil and gas industry in the world, and Tim Stewart in the last uh, 40 or 50 seconds, we make the cleanest fossil fuels. Uh, we are the cleanest. Give you the last word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Venezuela, you know, Russia holds 40% uh, of the Venezuelan projects alone. And so if we're going to Venezuela, we're going to Russia, we're helping OPEC plus. Ah, yes. It makes no sense. Again, it's illiterate. It's an illiterate policy, and, and we shouldn't have to be in this situation. So I hope they don't cut off LNG exports, which is what they're talking about. We run out of time, Tim Stewart. I'm sorry about that, but we will have you back. Anyway, congratulations on your tweet. Some common horse sense.